Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, your home for the crypto NEO news, education, and opportunities, plus your macro updates. My name is Ryan. My name is Lucas. And we've got some DeFi updates because really uh, we like to talk about interoperability. Where's the innovation? And we've got um, a little bit of both, a little bit of DeFi yeah. updates, interoperability. We talk about the IBC and Kujira is a project that, you know, we're always looking for that long-term macro value in a market that we've, we'll continue to follow and have shown that it, there's a lot more corrections to take place on the macro trend, but, but there's still opportunities and there's still development and it's, that's where you look. These are the times where you look for those projects that are innovating and that are still building when yes. market conditions may not be as, you know, yeah. generous. Well, Kujira, uh, it's been a standout during this bear market sideways season we've been going through. It's, um, you know, it's rallied over the course of the last couple of months, you know, in an extreme way. It's, it's gone from under a penny to over a dollar. You know, it's it, it's it's still uh, it's still a very, very bright point, part of the of DeFi, even in a, in a dark period. Right. So I guess the question is, well, what are they doing? Why are yeah. you people, you know, why are people buying this? Why is it going up so fast? And, and what's the story here? And why are we talking about DeFi? Because DeFi has been around like NFTs. There are many automated market makers, AMMs and indexes, yes. and uh, whether or not it's on Ethereum or EVM chains or in the IBC. So what's, what's going on with Kujira that makes it exciting? And part of this is not just IBC interoperability, but how right. they're creating an interface for cross-chain interoperability. But yeah, like you were going to, let's start with map of zones because this this is a huge uh, part of their, their value added. Exactly. So we're looking at the map of zones. This is a map of all the blockchains that are part of the IBC. And what this means is, is that because these chains are all designed with a similar protocol, um, the same protocol language, the uh, Cosmos SDK, Tendermint, that means that you can, uh, you can run, you can, you can make them interoperable, right? Because they're, they're based on, on uh, complementary architecture. So unlike uh, other parts of DeFi, where you have to go to an exchange or a third party and do a swap, uh, with IBC projects, you can do IBC transfers, which means you can send tokens across chain without having to go to a, a uh, an exchange or a, a third party. So there's this interoperability that's built in at the foundation with all of these blockchains. And you can see the connections between them, right? Now what Kujira is doing is, and, and others, this is not the only, but what Kujira is doing is, is they're launching their IBC blockchain, but they're building interoperability with the rest of the, with the DeFi ecosystem. So we're seeing, uh, connections and bridges built with the Ethereum world, with Phantom, with Moonbeam and others. So um, we're seeing what we're seeing is, is interoperability moving beyond the IBC. And, uh, you know, where, where you're not seeing a, a move towards bringing all of these different elements of DeFi together in a way that makes them compatible. And there's something else, the history of Kujira and some of its related projects and why you have this yes. map of zones up. What's also great about what you mentioned is that people who are building uh, decentralized applications on these blockchains, let's say that um, there is something in the tokenomics of that blockchain or a project that brings it down, like the Lunaterra UST debacle. Well, anyone who is building an application on Luna, which was a blockchain, not just the UST stablecoin, which there were right. many, that if they wanted to, and they were building something that was uh, very rich and robust, like Kujira with different um, access points for different blockchains, they can now build over, they can move their development on over to another blockchain. So that- Yeah, that's let's talk about that because that's exactly what happened. That's the history of Kujira. Uh, it started off as a liquidation engine on Luna Terra, right? And then the, the whole debacle with Terra happened and it crashed and because of you know bad design, bad tokenomics. We, we talked about that, um, but that's, we can link to that video too, actually. But uh, so they 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 realized okay well Lunaterra is coming to an end so what do we do next? They so they they rebuilt and migrated everything to, to Cosmos 
they uh, to Cosmos IBC and launch their own chain and begin building a whole new uh, version of themselves plus a whole lot of new features on the Cosmos IBC. So um, that's directly relevant to, uh, and uh, I will link this Twitter thread that um, is a bit of a walkthrough on Kujira. And I think it, it's, you know, it's definitely a one-stop shop to get the basics of what, what they're doing. Uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit uh, about what what Kujira is. W let's go back to DeFi, right? You you mentioned that uh, why we well, what is what is innovative about Kujira? Like, and if you've been following DeFi for a while, one of the main things that you've noticed is that there's there's a well there's this liquidity provision element, right? Where where uh, where swaps and AMMs and DEXs. They have liquidity pools for, for users to come and tie up some of their tokens. They're given a, an APR, there's rewards associated with that. And one of the risks of a liquidity pool is this problem of impermanent loss, where maybe like the you pull two tokens together and uh, one token moves uh, higher than the other. And so your, the, your uh, position's recalibrated and maybe you lose a little bit of, of one token and gain a little bit of the other. And, and so there's this there's this risk of this rebalancing, and you could end up with an, an impermanent loss if you were to liquidate that position versus if you held if you just held those tokens separately, right? So um, and, there, and there's other problems with DeFi too, with with protocols launching and having these awesome rewards at the very beginning and drawing all this investment and liquidity flows in. And then the early early providers um, they 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 see the token that they're getting paid in. Is is exploding in value as people you know try to try to acquire it, and so they and they're getting you know rewarded in it in an in in inflationary way. So it's a, the token supply is increasing fast, and so they the early providers you know they cash out, they they make it real, right? They they cancel their liquidity per, uh, stake, they they unstake, they unbond, they sell their LPs, and then what happens is is that the rewards and the uh, the value of of, of the later uh, stakes are dropped, and you get this kind of uh, exit liquidity um, kind of uh, dynamic where the first you know the first movers benefit, but then the people that come in later are getting dumped on, right? And they actually lose money. And this and so then then the protocol that then the next protocol emerges, and they have high uh, high rewards. So everybody kind of moves their value over to that other new protocol. And so there's this boom bust cycle in DeFi that's you know that's been a problem for a while now, right? And so one of the questions or one of the issues that that many projects are looking at is how do we how do we create protocol and liquidity for one? How do we tweak the incentives and the rewards such that so that we don't create this boom bust cycle? And and but also how do we do all this in a way that's sustainable? Because you you, you need to have you know you want to create incentives but you don't want the incentives to be such that they can't be sustained over time so so kujira is is re kind of recon retooling the DeFi in, in a way to kind of solve these problems and one of the things they're doing is they're getting rid of the liquidity providing layer and they're and they're not they're not uh, sourcing liquidity through that way for their for their swaps and their decks the decks that they have we're going to get into that later in a minute and what the innovation is there but what they're doing is they're they're um, they're using they're and they're also the stakers are getting a much lower APY right and it's all based on fees so instead of a token generation and some big inflationary supply of Kuji hitting them hitting the everybody's wallets what they're doing is just having the rewards come from fees. So what that means is, is that over time, as the protocol becomes more popular and more users come on and there's more swaps and more stakes and more transactions, the protocol is going to generate more fees and the, the reward to staking will actually go up. So unlike other DeFi protocols where you see the staking reward fall as it becomes more popular, this would invert that and you're actually going to see staking rewards increase as as Kuji becomes more popular and that's how they're going to make this that's how they're going to generate sustainable rewards they're not going to do it through token inflation they're going to do it uh through through fees and so that's that's a big part of it that's huge no and uh this is this is big and also they are looking at entering the stable coin market and they yes. are they they have a design to make it over collateralized with atom 
um, and yep. Kuji and the Kuji token, its own network where people can stake to support the network and earn the validation fees from the different applications, which we'll talk about another innovative feature they're doing is that you can stake Kuji uh, and in time earn a basket of assets um, outside of just Kujira. That's right. So, you know, they're, they're doing a lot. And like you mentioned, um, no, no impermanent loss, that's a big deal. And achieving that through a, an order book, which is very similar to what people are used to in markets anyway, allowing people to say, hey, I've, I want to buy or I want to sell X at this rate. And so I'll put it here in the book and lock it up right. and tell someone's there to fill it. So you allow for a more robust and dynamic um, DeFi ecosystem. And it's more efficient because a lot of times when you make your swaps, you're you're kind of in the dark about what the price you're going to get. And sometimes it's less than what you you expected. Whereas when you have an order book, you can ex exactly dictate like where you want to make your trade. And if it that if no one accepts that, then you don't make a trade, right? And so I feel like it's more efficient in terms of user experience, right? You get you get more control over over what you're doing. Cool. But uh, let's so let's take a look at what their different products are. This is on there. We'll we'll link to this to their uh, websites, Kujira.app, and they have Orca. This is Orca is a it's a collateral asset liquidation um, protocol where, and it also makes it where you can bid on discounted assets. So there's, you know, you can look at it from two different perspectives, no bots. Uh, it's, it's, it's relies on user, user actions. And uh, you, the, right now it's limited on the assets that you can liquidate uh, pretty soon. They're going to launch some polka dot assets. I think Kusama. Well, yeah, is, it'll be through... one of them. Polkadot, uh, the Polkadot ecosystem, Kusama and Karura, but there yeah. are some rich um, multi-chain ecosystems there. And what Orca will do will basically tap in. It's going to tie in to those ecosystems. So all of the yeah. assets that are available there, you will be able to access here in the IBC. Yes. So another amazing rich feature is this ability to tap in to, and this is what's cool about DeFi. In the, in the past, DeFi was siloed. Who's going to build a project that's going to, um, you know, compete and take the liquidity away from all the other projects? Whereas now we look at Kujira and they're not trying to do that. They're actually saying, we'll let, allow you to create an order book where you don't have to worry about impermanent loss. And we'll create an interface that will tap in to the Axlar Bridge ecosystem right. and the assets available there or the Polkadot ecosystem and the assets available there. So what's really neat and what's, uh, what's beautiful about this in DeFi is we're seeing another dynamic layer. We're, we're seeing, and it was great, the Uniswaps and the pancake swaps and those uh, that automated market maker style decks in the past. But we've got Phantom, we've got Avalanche, there's Ethereum, Polygon, um, you know, of course, you've got Polkadot, Kusama, and these other ecosystems, and we'll see it from other chains as well. How do we bridge them together? And that, that's what's beautiful is we're seeing DeFi applications that are serving more as hubs and marketplaces yes. for people to have access to many of these different blockchains. So very, very cool. Very cool. So that's, Absolutely. that's what Orca is doing. Uh, they are going to move cross chain eventually. Uh, and that'll be very cool. All in one, one place you can do your selling and, and, and perhaps bid on some assets as well. The next uh, project or product that Kujira has launched is Finn. This is the, the order book style exchange that we, we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. right? They're going to launch margin trading uh soon enough so you know if that's your bag then you, you can look to do that there so it's, it's essentially like a kucoin but in a decentralized uh smart contract form so that's very cool uh finder is their block explorer you know no need to go into too much detail on that blue, blue is the this is the staking governance bridge this is the hub for all your DeFi activities and we'll i'll show you what that looks like you you click connect, you can connect your Kepler. You got a, you have your dashboard. You can see how many, uh, you know, um, how many, uh, what your staked balance is and what the APR is, the supply, liquidity supply and 
all the details, the, you know, the token release schedule, you've got your, your wallet, uh, your swap. This is your basic AMM decks that we're all used to. These fees are what, um, well, of course, not just these fees, but fees across the entire Kujira ecosystem are what generate the rewards for the stakers, right? And here, so you click on stake and you can choose which validator you want to uh, stake under. And um, obviously the commission is the, is the fee you pay for the validator. You've got your governance tab where you can vote on view and vote on proposals. Um, and your mint, this is where, this is not launched yet, but this is where you're going to mint your USK, USK stable coin. Here we go. This is what I wanted to get to. So you have two different bridges here. You have your, your Cosmos IBC transfer, mm -hmm. where you can go from one IBC protocol to the next. And then more, more importantly, you have your cross-chain bridge, which is powered by Axelar. We did a video on Axelar recently. Very excited about what they're doing. And this is a cross-chain communication protocol. So you can take assets from various EVM style um, blockchains and bring them right over to, to Kujira. So this is, uh, this is very cool. There's Axelar assets in here, like Axel Atom. So yeah, this is kind of what we, this is really what we're focused on here is this cross-chain interoperability. That's what, and there's a lot of things Kujira is doing right regarding tokenomics and the order book on the on the exchange. So there's not just this, but but this is really the biggie. This is the the theme right now in in crypto. It's it, you're seeing it across across the space is trying to get out of that siloed world and build linkages between these projects. So you can go to a hub and and interact with various blockchains and their assets without having to swap. Uh, through an exchange or anything, just do it all in one home, one wallet or, or one protocol. What else do we want to talk about? Here's the order book. This is the order book exchange. Looks very similar to KuCoin. Or any other, or any any other, other order book from a centralized exchange that you may be used to. Here's and the documentation. We'll link that later uh, in the video, in the, in the, in the about section, but uh, you can, you can read more about, these different products and the tokenomics as well with, with Kujira here. Um, one of the things I'd want to talk about, we don't get too deep, but the, uh, the, the tokenomics that that's really kind of noteworthy here is that all of the revenue, including gas fees are, are uh, and from the internal dApps from Orca and Finn, all this, all these fees are returned to stakers as, as staking rewards. So this is really what I feel is the innovative tokenomics that because uh, you're trying to get around generating a massive uh, supply, a new supply of, 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 of your rewards token and to, so you don't dilute it, right? That's the whole idea. And you don't incentivize the first uh, adopt, early adopters to dump it. So if you can figure that out and solve that sustainability problem, I mean, that's kind of a big deal. And uh, speaking of kind of a big deal and why we're talking about this DeFi and these uh, innovative automated market makers or order books, why, what is blockchain and crypto doing to add value to the economy? You know, we, we like to talk about the economic, the macro perspective. That's our interest and our background. All of this information is educational information, entertainment, if you will. It's not financial advice, commercial advice, legal advice, medical advice. We're just sharing our perspectives. But what, what makes blockchain web 3.0 so innovative? How did people use to exchange anything of value uh, in the past through centralized exchanges, banks, intermediaries? There's front running. There are order books that only certain groups of people have access to the information. And because they have the liquidity and the information, they can charge. And there's a dead late, a day weight loss, for lack of a better term, in, yeah. in, the, in, the, in these markets. So why this is so innovative and neat is that blockchain is this new infrastructure that allows these smart contracts, allows these exchanges, these decisions, choices for people to make in a secure manner where we know there may be a bug in a program we'll, and that will be found out and another one can be made. But what can't be done is counterfeiting crypto and blockchain. And, and there are certain levels of security 
that make this yeah. so innovative. And, and that's what you're able to do this on a secure network. Are the tokenomics good or the tokenomics bad? Is the project sound? That may take time. But as far as the security of the network that's allowing these applications to exist, that um, proof of stake or, or proof of work network is is decentralized yeah, and is pretty is robust a lot more robust than traditional um, servers that get hacked in ways that people have stored banking information or any other kind of information so right. this so this is very innovative very cool what's going on here with kujira of course we've got other videos if you're interested in learning more about the innovations in blockchain and crypto what is needed you know we talk about nfts or, or privacy big big uh, into the topic of privacy and crypto and there's a lot going on with tornado cash uh, being a sanctioned dap which is mind-blowing to think about how uh, new blockchain and crypto is as a public blockchain service and with privacy being in many cases a needed and necessary feature for many applications but um, yeah, so we'll talk about where you can find the innovations there. And of course, the macro outlook, we have talked about the fall of the, uh, of the market since the Fed has announced that it would be collapsing it a, a, about a year ago with the rate hikes. But we uh, like to talk about other things maybe that aren't as popular, like what's going on with the balance sheet and other actions behind the scenes. So if you like that kind of information, you want us to give us a little love, you can hit the subscription bell notification. Uh, what else? Like it and drop a comment if there's a project and something happening that you'd like us to take a look at. But I think we covered pretty much the Kujira yeah. DeFi dynamic innovation. For sure. Let us know if we missed anything. But uh, yeah, I think that did it. Till the next time. Have a beautiful day. Namaste, y'all. Thank you.